Hello and welcome to Maya with Haste. George here, and in this video we're picking up just after our extrusion video from before. That's why we have this strange looking object before us. And I want to take a few minutes to talk to you about another amazing tool that I absolutely use all the time inside of Maya, and that is the insert edge loop tool. Whenever I find I don't have enough detail to work with, or I need to soften an area, I use the insert edge loop tool. And this is a great object to start with because I don't have a lot of detail to work with between each of those extrusions. Perhaps someone came to me and said, hey, you need to add more cargo bays or windows to one area. I wouldn't want to have to go back and redo all that. Instead, I can insert edge loops in between those areas. Someone can tell me how many windows they exactly want, and I can insert exactly that number evenly spaced. So before we get started, though, I, I did want to remind you about history. That is our inputs to this model over here in our channel box. So right here under inputs, you can see I have all of these extrusions, but all this information should be cleared if I'm no longer going to edit it or have no reason to undo. So I'm gonna hit edit, delete by type, history. All my inputs are gone. So let's get right to it. Let's hold down the left shift key, right click with our mouse, and here you can see our insert edge loop tool. I'm gonna to go ahead and open up the settings for this, which will populate the tool settings area on your left side of the screen. Now, what's important to understand is that there are three modes for this, really. There's relative distance from an edge, equal distance from an edge, as well as multiple edge loops. Relative distance and equal distance are more freeform. That is, you, you click on an edge and it automatically creates a loop around that geometry if it can figure it out. If you made really poor topology, poor geometry, sometimes this tool doesn't know where to connect and it won't work properly. But because my geometry here is just simple quads created from extrusions, it knows how to connect things. So for instance, you'll notice it's able to literally span the entire length of my object from where I'm clicking all the way around and back again, adding new detail. But you'll notice it's kind of difficult for me to figure out exactly where the center is. Maybe I wanted to split this object exactly in half and break it up into two pieces. I'm not very precise doing this. Now I could try to come from a side view and do this as well, but still it's, it's not terribly precise and I'm probably going to be slightly off when I do this. A better way to do this if you want real precision is to use the multiple edge loops tool. This allows you to specify how many edge loops you want. So in the case of one edge loop, it's going to add one loop directly in the center of this object all the way around. And now all we have to do is come from a side view and if we wanted to right click select faces and of course grab all those ones and delete them if we no longer want them for our object. Of course I missed a few in selecting so I could do something like this and this and get rid of them. And now I have a perfect half of my object. By the way, this is really good if you wanted to mirror your object or only do work on half of it. That way you don't have to do all the work on the other side either and you can just duplicate your object across it. I'm gonna hit Control Z a few times to undo what I just did. Now imagine you wanted to slice up even more. Let's go ahead back to object mode, hold down shift key, right click and go to edge loop tool. Instead of using one, maybe I want two, right? Maybe I want to split it up into thirds, or perhaps I want to add windows. Maybe someone said, hey, George, you messed up. I need some windows on the side of this area. Okay, no problem. Let me slice it up. So now I've sliced up my object. Let's create some windows. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all of them, hit Control E for extrusion, and now I'm going to use the scale tool. Let me turn heat faces off, and I can scale them individually down. Hit the G key again to make another extrusion, and automatically I've you know, added quite a bit of additional detail with almost no time wasted at all. And that's the power of using insert edge loop along with extrusions. You can slice up your mesh, add those cuts you need at precisely the locations you want, and then pull in or push in geometry and detail to suit. Now let's hold down the shift key, right click, and go back to insert edge loop tool real quick. There's an interesting parameter called insert with edge flow. But the idea here is that when you insert that edge, it's going to look at the flow of the geometry around it and try to match it. That is, it will pull in on certain areas and push out on others. Now for an object like this one, which is, you know, this sort of space station, this makes no sense. But when you're dealing with a humanoid, uh, an object that has curvature to it, this is a lifesaver. It automatically starts, you know, providing smooth contours for your object. So you can imagine here, inserted edge, dead center here, somewhere like right about there. It automatically pinched that in, which is probably what I want to do over long distances on a humanoid character. Or if I add one up here, it's rounded it off so that this edge slowly merges in with the surrounding information in detail. Very useful for quickly making things, um, you know, look a little bit more natural and realistic and organic. 
by combining both the insert edge tool and the extrude tool, you can do some amazing things really quickly with almost no time. Please sit down and experiment with it. There's a lot of different settings and modes that I didn't cover here, but I really just wanted to get you sort of going with this tool. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.